Black Link Magazine welcomes Mr. Paul Porter, who has been in the music industry for over 40 years and is the author of Blackout. Welcome, Mr. Paul Porter. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. I am Marva Brown. I am the CEO, Chief Editor of Black Link Magazine. And I'm so excited this evening to have Mr. Paul Porter with us. And I'm going to allow him before, after I welcome him to Black Link Magazine, just allow him to introduce himself. So Mr. Porter, welcome to Black Link Magazine. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Marva. You can call me Paul. Okay. I'm old. I'm a double OG, but I'm still Paul. You're as long as I can kick my son's ass, I'm still Paul. But uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, I, okay. I'm glad to be here and uh, share some uh, truth and experience. And I've got that for sure. My first check came 43 years ago. So I got plenty of stories to share from radio to television to cable to crime and everything else and i'm i'm glad to be here with black link because i want to link up well i'm so excited to have you so let's just get down to it because there is a lot to talk about you do have a lot going on um the first first of all i want to talk about um you are the ceo and founder of music biz you is that right yeah music biz you is an app a website about 12 years ago the new game in the music business is getting into the game. More money is spent on losers than winners. You know, iTunes made more money off of losers than million sellers. And it just seemed that so many black and brown people would get ripped off with all types of scams. I started a site called raprehab.com. It's still up there. There's a section called Brain Food and do it yourself with a lot of great ideas how to make money. We are, you know, the music industry is a game of uh, smoke and mirrors. Yes. And it seems, you know, now they got us chasing after streams and streams pay 0. 0.006 cent a stream. And publishing on the radio pays seven cent a play. So you know, they have us chasing for some of the wrong things. And, and and I just found out that, you know, there's a, the business of music is important. You know, they call it music business for a reason. And that's why I started Music Biz Youth. Let's go all the way back to before the streaming, before, you know, people getting famous online. Um, talk about what the business was like and how people really had to work, you know, to get in the business. And then they, but they came in the business and they didn't really know the business. So I want to talk about all of that. I want to talk about what it was like to get into the business and how it was so uh, messed up for artists because they didn't know the business side of it. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. I got started sort of early. My best friend on my block uh, back in Jamaica, Queens, growing up, divorced his mom and married Nina Simone. So I'm, I'm, you know, eight, nine years old going to spend weekends at Nina Simone's house. And back then, all I know is Mr. Stroud had a big black Lincoln Continental and, you know, the big house. But he, he started to mentor me. And by the time I was in, went to college, you know, I, I started to learn the business side of the record company and going up to RCA Records when, yeah. Anyway, I started to study the business and got in college radio and college radio led me to DC and Donnie Simpson hired me in BET. And, you know, I st the first touch of the music business the business side of it, I got some publishing on a Whispers album in 1984. And um, I, I learned what it was to make like real money. And don't get me wrong, I was doing well, but all of a sudden you get a cut on the Whispers album and get a publishing check. So I started to study the game and, and certain things that I did, you know, uh, just made me sort of want to learn the business. And unfortunately, 
I've been around for 40 years, so I've seen a lot of great artists come and go, or even label executives and people that have like a great five, 10 year run, but, but this business can kill you. And one of my best friends, George Howard, who was a soprano sax player, had 10 albums on MCA, the stress killed him, you know? And, and I know it's, there's just so many things that go on. And, and nowadays, it's even worse for artists, you know, cause there's, everybody can act like you're in the business. You know, you can buy an Instagram ad and before you have to sort of be a student at a game and get in at studios and, you know, volunteer and, and you sort of brought yourself up. But with this new rise of the entrepreneur, everybody thinks they can do it alone. And nobody can. You, you really can. It takes too much money and too much knowledge. And this is a, a time management game. You know, most people just don't spend their time wisely. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing I always say, the paper chase takes paperwork. And I found that out the tough way because I didn't do the paperwork at first, mm -hmm. you know, or I didn't find somebody on my team that you can trust to handle it. Like the first thing that I did know to do is get a great lawyer. And I'm not saying, you know, Bebe that went to Howard Law School that works at the government to do music industry contract. That's not the one. Mm -hmm. Somebody who opens deals and, and being a student. And, you know, it's funny, I lecture at colleges now a lot. And there's this thing I talk about, the E-ratio. Mm -hmm. And the E-ratio deals with the amount of time we spend on mobile phones. And there's two things you can do on mobile phones, uh, entertainment or education. Mm -hmm. So the average person spends 50 minutes on entertainment and one minute on education. But the average black and brown person spends 200 minutes on entertainment and one on ed education. And there's just so much knowledge that if you use your time management well, you can actually learn and advance yourself so you don't get caught up in these games. And, and that's the scary part. There's so much smoke and mirrors, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. And, and it's hard to consume and see because everybody thinks, everybody's looking for the quick break. But, you know, I've been lucky enough to, you know, I've taken my battles and falls and picked myself up, you know, and, and that's why I wrote about it in my book, Blackout, my 40 years in the music business. I want to know, so you, you talked about, you seen them come and go and, and, and can we count that up as because they didn't know the business or they didn't have the right people on their team to help them survive because you've survived a long time. And there's not a lot of people that, I mean, and people that are really truly talented that don't last in the game for a long time. And I'm hearing the griminess of the business and the contract. And if you don't know how it can swallow you up. And every time I have an interview with someone of your status, we talk about that because I want to get out to the young people that just think you could just jump in this game and go perform and you're going to be, you're going to be all right. So let's talk about that. I know, but, but that's, you know, we spend so much time studying what I call a public success and a private failure. Ooh. Like a lot of these artists that we see, we think they are it. Yeah. And, you know, three years later, you find out they're broke. You know, I played college basketball and used to do the NBA all-star game. Uh, all my boys, a couple played in the NBA. And it's just like in sport, you know, you, you see how does somebody make a hundred million dollars and they're broke at 38 and that's this business, you know, and the music business has so many, and the title of my book is black and blackout for me means a temporary loss of consciousness. And I lost my mind in the music business for a while, you know, 
uh, the first 10 years I'm in DC, Chocolate City, Donnie Simpson hired me, had a TV show, making a hundred thousand from the radio show, another hundred thousand from the TV show. I'm chasing booty and, uh, you know, partying and having a great time, you know, but you know, the appearance, I lived in DC, nice house, driving a BMW, but I, I wasn't doing the business. Right. You know, I wasn't learning how to make myself good. And when I got fired from that job, it was a heartbreak. Then I got lucky, Kathy Hughes hired me at Radio One, blah, blah, blah. And I got fired there, you know, after why? bringing Did that station. Well, you know, sometimes there is no why. Okay. You know, I go. The, you know, sometimes. My favorite saying is, if you're not at the table, you'll be on the menu. Whoa. So if you don't own it, it's not yours. And for so long, I spent 11 years at BET and did so much for that network. And when I got fired, it was this cold-blooded, no severance, no nothing. And, you know, it crushed me. I was supposed to get stock options before the sale of Viacom. It was going to be over a million dollars. I got fired like three weeks before. Aww. So yeah, but that pain, and that's a that's the entertainment business taking those, the bouncing back. You know, because you're going to have highs and lows. You know, nobody has a Cinderella career, and if they do, they're one in a gazillion. They're not going to be you. And and until you learn to survive the long game. Two guys that, um, the first two guys I managed when I was in D.C. were Ron Lawrence and Derek Angeletti. And Ron and Derek did all the Puffy records, the Hypnotized, Biggie, Faith Evans. Yeah. And it's funny because Ron went on to produce Aretha Franklin and Luther Vandross and Gloria Estefan. And he moved away from hip hop. So a hundred million record sales later, his life is cemented where he doesn't have to write another song because producers, they sort of get hot and then they're done. I mean, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis haven't had a hit in 25 years, but they're worth $50 million. So sometimes we think this ride is forever. And when I was talking about Ron and Derek and Derek, D. Dot Angeletti, as people might know him from the Puffy shows, he stayed in hip hop. Mm -hmm. And he had a much harder grind. You know, you can look at both of them and see, and I love them both. Right. And I've shared the story to them, but they took different routes mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of went into different doors. And, and that's what, what, you know, years ago when, I don't know if you remember Adolf Caesar. He was in a soldier's story in Purple Rain. Mm -hmm. He was one of my mentors. And uh, I used to call him Uncle Adolf. Mm -hmm. And I was in DC on the radio, Deep Voice. And uh, one day he said, man, you keep doing that shit. They go kick your ass out. And he did voiceovers right. before he was an actor. So I, I started to go take lessons. Uh -huh. He's hooked me up with Veda Mark Antonio. It was $150 an hour Ooh. to take voice lessons. And I always was told that I had a great voice and she ripped me up. But anyway, I started to go on, on trains to New York to do auditions from DC. And the second day I booked a spot for AT&T, uh, six words. I got paid 65,000 30 days later. Ooh. And all I said was, at and it's all within your reach. So I was like, I had no idea about the voiceover side of the business you and, and the money. Yeah, yeah. But I had no idea, you know, the money you can make. And that's this from hooking up with people. And that's why I say this is a connection business where people can open doors for you. And, and the one good thing is, you know, Wendy Williams went to my, my college. We went to Northeast and I started the college radio station. 
Joy Reid, I remember when Joy Reid at MSNBC was doing a AM show in Miami and we became friends. And, you know, 10 years later, I got to tell her she had the job at MSNBC. You know, so it takes time. Some of these relay, like Wendy called me last night and uh, we were laughing. Well, we were laughing. Well, over this, how we've seen so much happen in the last 35, 40 years and friends passing and dying and going through so much stress. And she's went through her own stress and pressure. And I, but love, it's, her. I love her. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's about it's about building relationships and, and and helping getting knowledge through friends and relationships. So you talked about I saw also in your bio about mindset, um, and and how you are a coach, right? It was some of that because of what you saw in the business and you saw how the stress could overwhelm people? And do you feel like, like the people that died of overdoses and drugs, it was the business that just drove them? Um, yeah, it's this fake pressure that the yell, scream, tough guy. Me and my son, my son, he works at Quality Control Records in Atlanta with Little Baby and Offset and Cardi B. And what he goes through now, you know, last trip before the pandemic, I was in Atlanta and we met up at Buckhead right around the corner from his house. And I grabbed him and gave him a hug and felt two guns on his, on both of his sides. I'm like, Miles, what, what is that? You know, and I, I believe in but guns, but it's, it's just a different mindset now. Where you gotta, you know, in Atlanta, they run lights so you don't get robbed at a light or shot. You know, everybody on their team, this they roll through red lights and pay the tickets. Like, really? Is that what this business has come down to? All this hate and murder? But that's stressful. And, you know, when I got fired from uh, Kathy Hughes in DC, I was going bald. And now, as you can see, even though it's a mess, I got dreads, right. you know? So it's mentally figuring out who you are. Yeah. And 85% of people in this business are sheep that is following somebody else's path. That doesn't work. And I've been around long enough to know that success is a different speed. Like yeah. I got a record out with my cousin, Chris Porter. We had a record, The Water Dance, independent record, got a hundred million views. Whoa. Look it up on YouTube. Whoa. How did we do it? We busted our ass for a year and a half. One song, I told him, he asked me what I needed to make it happen. And I said, $25,000. And Chris studied Kickstarter for 30 days. He did a Kickstarter campaign. And 30 days after that, like 60 days later, he had 25 grand. But real fans spend money and support you. He did a quality video, made a nice presentation, hit people up. And before you know it, he had 25 grand. We took that 25 grand. We did a video with Trisha Miranda, who is a choreographer for MTV that does all the day. We flew out to LA, paid her nine grand to shoot a dance video. You can look it up on YouTube, Chris Porter, The Water Dance. And it has all her influences, all the kids that dance. Well, guess what? That video did 20 million in the first month because it was hot. Then an NFL player did it. Then Kelly Ripper from Live did it. Then it went number one and, you know, but it was thinking outside of this box, yeah. you know, and say, I'm not going to be able to, uh, you know, $100 in Facebook ads is not going to launch your career, Chris. You got to come out with a bang and do some big things or take some chances. But most of all, people don't want to invest in themselves. Well, I'm 63 years old. I still take voice lessons. Why? 
not only is my coach a casting director, he makes me better, you know? And, and, and you need to hear from people that are not going to be yes people. Yes. And this music industry, you know, everybody got a boy who says, yo, that shit is fire. Oh, oh, G guess what? You know, if they're not paying for it, don't get excited. You know, if you want your ego stroked, have kids, you know, have babies. <laughs> yeah. And they'll tell you they love you, mommy and daddy. <laughs> But when they love your music and don't pay for it, <laughs> you know, not help. <laughs> Dr. I mean, Uncle Jams, I can't, I always call him doctor or so, but Uncle Jams was saying the same thing. He was like, your people might tell you, oh, that sound good. You the best at what you do. And you ain't ish, you know, really yeah. in the business. It's just like your family might think that. So don't take that, what your family's telling you or your friends, you really better go get you some help from the professionals that can help you develop yourself. So, yeah. And I yeah. believe that it don't matter how old you are, as long as you live in, you can always learn and be better and get better. Yeah, oh, but I don't stop learning. Yeah. And it's painful, you know, <laughs> if it's clubhouse or now it's green room and I, and I'm no slave to social media. But I want to know what's going on. You know, I don't have to live on it, but I want to see and talk to people and share. And, and the good thing about some of these apps now, you can actually meet people and be in rooms and pick up knowledge. Like sometimes when people approach me, they don't even know how to approach. You know, right. they'll say, yo, tap in and yeah. send me a link. And I'm like, why am I going to check out your link? Yeah. I'll do some research. And, you know, it, it's it's shameful, but, you know, it's just because we don't do enough talking. Look, social media to me was the parent of social distancing. 20 years ago, when everybody started texting and showing these images, we stopped talking. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know how to hold conversations oh, or stand out in rooms and they're used to doing everything fast on a keyboard and the yeah. keyboard won't close the deal for you, your personality, your knowledge will, and how you can light up a room or a conversation. And we got to spend more time on that, learning how to approach, follow up. And understand that you got to give something. You can't always be taken and ask it. Like I own a radio station here in Orlando. So somebody just recommended some guy from uh, New York who I know for a job. And he calls me up and he says, hey, man, I, you know, I just moved here and I got another job. But I'd rather not work there. I'd rather spend music and work for you. I'm like, really, bro? Like, you ain't sent me nothing or, you know, and he's 50 years old and he doesn't know how to open doors for himself. So, uh, you know, that's part of the problem, though. Yeah, it is. And even like, and the reason I keep referring back to the younger is because I have a, a, a son that's going to be 18 actually tomorrow that wants to be in this business. Oh, happy birthday. Fun. Yeah, happy birthday, son. I'm trying to, you know, learn as much as I can to help him. But, you know, you got to even know how to have an interview. Like, go. how are you, you the interview etiquette? How are you going to sit in, around these, these big tables with these big people of sitting across from them and you don't have the answers they're looking for? You don't know how to have that conversation that you need to help open that door for you. And I, you just... Like you can't even hardly tell a lot of them stuff. It's like they all got it figured out. So and they go. And, and that's the yeah. thing, man. You got to learn how to be humble. And, and one of the real abilities is being able to listen, yes. absorb. Ooh. And I, I call it chew the meat and spit out the bones. Like everything that Paul Porter says is not correct, or it's not correct for you. Mm -hmm. But there's some stuff that I will give you that you can, but you got to execute, you know, and procrastination is the other thing. Yes. We say we want it, we want it, but how much time do you spend? How much time are you watching a video that you can learn about sound exchange or royalty rates 
or how to even enter into a conversation about business. Mm -hmm. And it's all there on your phone, but we don't know where to go or we don't want to look or do the research or we want to trust somebody else. Yeah. And, you know, they can be the expert. Like I got an expert in everything but I know how to talk to the expert. Like if I don't know something, I got a guy, Easy Tommy, he's my music guy. Chris Porter's my other guy for digital and video and ask, you know, so there's, there's so many different people that I learn from consistently. And if you don't have them in your camp, you're not learning. So what do you say to an artist, especially an independent artist? Like how many people do they need on their team for business? Like I know they need a manager. They need the, I guess. A but hey, what, where Marvin, do you go? before you get started, it all depends what level they're at, okay. you know? And, and some people at a level where they need a manager. Most po people don't need a manager. What am I gonna manage if you're not making any money? You need somebody helping you to get to the point where you can make money. Because if a manager is making 20% of nothing, he's not a good manager. You know, nobody gives you anything in this business. You gotta sort of earn it and put yourself. And, and once, once you find a way to start sustaining some money, then you need a manager, you know? You need to study first, like, and that's the difference. It, it, and I started in the seventies. So everybody in the music business in the seventies and eighties went to Berkeley, New England Conservatory. They studied music. They could read music. They could play guitars and keyboard. They were into touring and presentation. And, and there was some structure and songwriting and everything. And once sampling, and don't get me wrong, I love hip hop, but it's a lazy man's game. You know, you buy your beats online yeah. and you spit over them. Yeah. And, but there's still a different energy when you learn the music and you make it yourself, you know? So there's, there's so many levels. So an independent artist, I try to meet them where they are. You know, uh, I'll, I'll sit down and talk and say, hey, this, this is where, what I would work on now to build yourself up to that level. A lot of times we think we're ready, or some, most of the time, most people think their music's great and it's average. And guess what? There's 60,000 average songs being uploaded every day. True. You know? So how are you standing out? I'd rather wait a year and do it right than put out something every week and get no return. And there's all this philosophy. Everybody has different, oh, oversaturate. And you know, you look at Instagram, you think everybody's a star. And they're not. You know, they just have 20 seconds of <laughs> and, and 60,000 followers and still haven't figured out how to convert it into dollars. And, and then some artists, you know how I said, a public success and a private failure. Mm -hmm. But then there's artists that are making a ton of money that you don't know that it's like my favorite singer on the planet earth is Rochelle Farrell. Mm -hmm. She had a record deal on Capitol, hasn't put out a record in 20 years, but she's a multimillionaire because she tours 150 times a year all over the world because she has crazy talent. You know, she lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico in a mansion and nobody knows who Rochelle is unless you're old enough to know. So there's so, so many different ways to make it in the business. Yeah. Wow. Well, I appreciate all that information. So let's talk about your book. Let's talk about your book. So you said that I, I, basically you um, Sit, decided to sit down and write the book because of your experiences in the in the music. Well, industry. well, to be oh. honest, I had a book deal when I like thirteen years ago at Harper Collins. I got a six digit advance after I left BET. It was called the same songs. Little did I know that Harper Collins was owned by Sony BMG. So some of the stories that I told in the book 
were with their record labels, how payola works and how pay for play with Clive Davis and some of the other. So they told, they want to put out my book. They were worried about getting sued. Mm -hmm. And they told me to keep the advance. I couldn't put it out for seven years. It mm -hmm. took me 10 years to rewrite it and update it, but it's the same book. But I decided to do it myself. And I just wanted an honest account. You know, the book opens up in 99 when I went back to BET. You know, I checked into Hotel George and, you know, the first weekend I get a FedEx and it says Karen Klein. I'm like, what the hell is Karen Klein? I open it up and uh, there's three envelopes, $100 bills in it, totaling 30,000 in cash with no name, no note, just money. And Monday I get to work, 1999, it was pre-cell phones. You know, matter of fact, that was the first year I got a normal cell phone. I used to have one of them two-way radios in yeah. my car. <laughs> and um. It was a guy from a record company saying, welcome to BET, you know, and he was the big indie who pays people off. And uh, I called the label and said, yo, man, don't be sending me no money. I'm not making no decisions, but I did keep that money. <laughs> uh, I wasn't making decisions based on money. And I, 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 you know, I did a lot of things at the network, took a lot of junk out. And the ratings went up. And this is before the sale of Viacom. Mm -hmm. We went up like two shares, which was incredible, mm -hmm. incredible for BET. And I don't know that, you know, sometimes I look back and go, wow, what a monster this industry is. But think about it, it's all based on capital. Yeah. You know, so if I'm a programmer in Charlotte, North Carolina, and a record company is gonna give me $600 for every record I add. And I add five records a week and I'm program director and music director. That's an extra three grand. Thank you. And guess what? You probably making 50 and 60,000 anyway at these companies the way the money's gone down. So damn right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play WAP all day, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, because of the money mm -hmm. and and that's this this business is capital you know everybody i say programmers have cups instead of hands if you look at their hands they shape like cup because they always want something in them you know <laughs> even djs now yeah. make sure djs get paid you know man i ain't breaking your record i need some paper you know it's like everything's capital Wow. And I don't care how talented you are, you got to be just as talented in business. Matter of fact, more losers happen than winners because their business side is taken care of. You know, the business side. Well, I think that, and, and every, I'm going to say it again, everybody that on your level um, that I've spoken with have, are, are, is making a point to say, you better grasp a hold of the business side of this thing because you can't just come in here blindsided and get blindsided. It'll be over for you. They said- Yeah, that and you get one you shot, Marva. Sometimes it's one shot. So if your paperwork's funny or or you didn't do, get a clearance, like, you know, like I'll place records on ESPN or television shows. And sometimes the artists don't have the paperwork. You know, they're not registered at a PRO or all of a sudden they don't own the beat because they leased it for $50 instead of making it or buying it and they miss out on money. Yeah. And, but but what, what do you expect? This is the only industry where people think they can be Jay-Z or Diddy without studying, without going to college or or learning. You know, this is, this is the only industry that can do a lot of things that other other industries don't do. And, you know, I I, I don't know. I used to always say, I want to be a part of this business. Like, 
I, I don't I don't sing. I can hold a tune, but I don't sing. I don't do none of that. I want to know what I can, how I can fit in. And then when I start having these conversations, I'm like, do I really want to be a part of that industry? Because it's so hey, don't get me wrong, there's good people too. There there are, but they're few. It's like life, you know, but there's there's so much more smoke out here. Like yeah. so many, and people get celebrated for robbing people. You know, they're all gangsters. Like one of the guys, I, I was in a record pool in Boston and when I was growing up, uh, you know, in college, Maurice Starr, who started New Edition and New Kids in the Block, uh -huh. he was one of the guys in the record pool. And uh, and Arthur, who did, damn, I can't, Beach Street. And we used to be in a record pool and we had all these dreams, you know, we had vinyl. And Maurice, I got him his first deal at RCA from the same neighbor's father, you know, and he took that money and started a new edition. Right. Made a ton of money, started new kids on the block, made a ton of money. And Maurice lives like an hour from me in Florida. But when I went to his house, when I first moved down here, it was like his life ended in 1995. Like his house looked like 1995. He had green carpet and all, you know, the studio was like, and he lost all this money, Aww. you know, and still got new groups. But I, I'm just saying, and it's hard to want to live up to a lifestyle and know it's going to change. But that's why when I meet good people, like I mentioned Ron Lawrence before. Yeah he was always the level-headed guy, yeah. you know? His sister was a lawyer, her si his, she's a lawyer for 21 Savage and a bunch of artists. Yeah. And he's kept all his money and he's kept humble, you know, got a nice house, but it's real easy to want to get the Bentley and the, the rocks and all the standard things yeah. that don't pay. And right now, the new game is startups, you know? Like, we're not in the tech game. Right. And the tech game is where it's at. That's where I've been trying to be the last couple of years. I'm involved with the startup now. And once I learned how startups make their money, you know, and you can have a start. There are a lot of millionaires that got startups that have failed because that's a whole different process. Yeah. You work for a couple of years, you sell it, you take the profit and you get a two, $3 million check, do it again, work on some more. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay. Well, they set aside 358 year to live on. You building something and then you're owning some equity in the company. And that's why I said, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu, you know, if it's not paying back. And thank God, now that I'm old enough, I got a pension. From yeah. after and SAG for oh. doing commercials and being yeah. in unions. And I never thought of that. Yeah. I never, you know. Well, that's what I was gonna ask you. What about their I never hear, and I guess it's personal business though, but what about 401ks and all that stuff? No, look, and my insurance, boys, life insurance. What was what what? I've 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 fought for uh, performance rights. Like one of my best friends was with Mays and Frankie Beverly, Ron Smith, the guitar player. You know, when you hear Before I Let Go, the classic, that guitar link when Beyonce, well, yeah. he left Mays 15, 20 years ago. You know, all the original members left because Frankie, Frankie kept all the publishing and everything else. And they never got any extra checks. Frankie has a house in Hawaii. He has a, you know, when Mays and Frankie Beverly, I thought they were a group. They were really Frankie Beverly and the fellas. Yeah. Because he got paid and he paid the band. And they were one of the greatest bands, toured the world, did seven nights in London, sold out and, you know, but it doesn't pay that well, you know? And he's doing computers the last 15 years and fighting to get some of the royalties that he deserves. Yeah. You know, and so many people. I was out with Dionne Warwick and George Clinton on the road 
for years because George Clinton lost so much. Imagine having a catalog of George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic and not being a multimillionaire. But that was the case. He sold his rights. And it happens all the time. Aww. But it's got to get better. And that's why I wrote about it, the ups and downs. And the more we have these conversations like this and we share, yeah. we're all, this is new for us. You know, this is second, third generation. Yeah. You know, it's new money for us. So we get sort of foolish, but we got to learn and get better. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep having these conversations. I, I have I have a son that's adamant that I would just like, I, and I've been having the conversation. I'm like wanting to tell him, just never mind, you know, find something else to do. What's he but do? He's he raps. Okay. Um, and, but and, does he make his own music? Well, no. He writes his own. He he writes his, he writes own, stuff, his he, own rhymes. He, yeah, he writes his own stuff. He writes. Yeah, his but own stuff. He, he's got to learn how to make a beat. Learn oh, how to. So let me tell get, you, his uncle owns a little studio and he's teaching him that to how to do make his beat. So he'll be doing that. But I'm just like, I'm the brain and I want to learn the business because I don't, you know how I'm a mama bear. I don't want him. He's got to bump his head, but I don't want him to start something. And then people are robbing him. Like, you know, those are the stories I hear about the business, but you know, that's, that's just personal. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off. Yeah, of No, but that's okay. personal for every parent. <laughs> and, and it should be the, the need of every artist to want to know the business. Yeah. And it's because you're a momager or you want to be that. That's <laughs> how the business side of the artist should be. You know, that sometimes they act like they're everything and they're not. Right. And to be humble enough to say, I got to learn. Yeah. And being around people, I'd love to talk to your son. So let's look that up. Oh, good. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'll be glad to let have y'all have a conversation because I just want him to understand. And these interviews that I have, like with Uncle Jams and with you, you know, the people that Auntie Jackie referred me to, she has a, I mean, she has a genuine respect for you guys. And she said, you don't, you better Google them and find out who they are. Right. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to allow, I mean, he needs to hear it. And everybody, all the young ones that are coming up, they need to hear these interviews. And that's why I keep having them because they better know. I, you know, and also share, because everybody's not a reader. If you Google Paul Porter blackout C-SPAN, C-SPAN gave me 90 minutes I saw of that. television. Yeah. And I tell honest stories about winning and losing. And, and some, sometimes people are hard headed, but when they hear the stories, they sort of get it and it makes them want to dig in and do the research. Mm -hmm. I've been lucky my book's done pretty well. It's four years old. And every book that I sign and ship, I put my phone number in it. You know, I'll sign it. So yeah. I've had conversations with people in Israel to, you know, Buffalo to the West Coast yeah. with questions, you know, and you can't be scared to ask. Yeah. Like people are scared to ask a lot. And so that's I, how the doors open. Yeah, I think with your status, that people get intimidated a little, you know, intimidated to ask, you know, how do we approach someone of your status respectfully, right? But I mean, how do you know if you don't ask? If you don't yeah. ask a question, you will never know. And if I ask a question and they don't want to answer it, oh, well, at least I ask and I took that chance because I want to know. And if that person don't want to tell me, we get to the next person, right? Yeah. Can't be, closed mouth cannot get fed. And I'm so, I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep trying this thing and trying to figure it out. I just, I'm yeah, just- but it's about, you know, when I talked about voiceovers earlier, yeah. I got my first big voiceover on my third audition. And then I went out 25 more times and didn't get one. And my ego was like, fuck this. Yeah. But, you know, and then when I talked to my agent, they said that shit was a miracle that you did, you know? If you book one out of 40, you're doing great, wow. you know, until you get to that next stage. Yeah. But imagine, you know, if you get two, three spots a year, that's $150 per 
$150,000 part-time, you yeah. know? Yeah. And of course, the big guys that do the, in a world where the, the movie trailers, uh, millions of dollars. You got that voice, Paul. You yeah, got but that voice. every, but think of every voice you hear on your phone, on television, in the movies, the babies' voices, the kids' voices, the animation. Somebody's getting paid for that. And See, there's so many normal talking voices out there. There's a website I tell folks to go to. I want to be a voice actor.com. I want to be a voice actor.com. It breaks down the industry. It's not, doesn't give you a job, but it tells you some of the things that you can do. And there's now you can digitally apply for voice jobs all over the country. I want On to voice, voice123.com is the website. And, and you get to a certain stage and you get an agent and they'll get you work. But I gave some of that information out on Clubhouse back in November and in January. No, no, it was February. His sister called me because she was a single mother. Yeah. And she booked a $4,000 spot what? For, by studying and putting a tape together and auditioning. She said she was doing 20 auditions from home every day for like a week and she booked a spot. I'm in, four G's. Business, I'm in the wrong Paul. I'm in the wrong But I, I'm saying we don't get that because we don't share. Yes, you right. know, we don't talk about it. It's true. And there's so many levels of the business. So true. And you might come in as a rapper, but you might leave as an agent, a casting agent, or a producer, wow. or, you know, something that's going to feed your family and give you time. And it's... It, you know, we don't celebrate like those public figures on Instagram are never the tech guys. They're never the right. brother that starts the the startup that's going to make, you know. Yeah. We always we always see the guy with the Bugatti or the Bentley. Yeah, you know? true. And we don't see the guy who's happy at home laying out at the pool with his two kids. You so know? maybe that's how he want to keep it. Just just be undercover. Let me make yeah. pack, get my bag undercover because I don't need the stress. Mm -hmm. No, that, and that's the key. And it's not look. Look, I, I mentioned Wendy. Wendy Williams has been my girl for a long time. You know, she was going crazy in her relationship when she was going through hell. I talked to Wendy every night for a year mm -hmm. and tried to get her to see the light. But she was just trained, you know, and, and I'm not going to get into all the business, but right. now seeing her happy as can be, living her best life, okay. it's beautiful, I'm you know, her, yeah. but, but that's what I mean. But out front, you think she was having, and the stress when she got sick, that shit's stress, yeah. you know, and, and nobody can take that. And I've had stress too, so. Uh, what well, nobody's perfect in this game, you know. Yeah, no doubt. I enjoyed you. I like I could talk to you forever because I'm. Well, so we can do it again. We'll do yeah, it again. Let's, let's do a part two and just talk again about other things. Uh, I really do appreciate everything that you're giving out for free, and people should just be, you know, humble and accept it and really take it to heart because you know what you're talking about. And like you said, you don't know everything, but you know a lot. You've been there. And so I'm talking to people that are viewing, that are going to view this. You, if you're interested in being in the business, whatever that is, whatever that looks like for you, take what, we're, what we have here at Black Link Magazine with the interview with Paul Porter and, and, and take his information that he's given to you freely and do something with it. Remember the education piece. Paul, thank you for everything. Thank you for dropping the gems. I can't wait till we do it again. I'll get you connected with my son. And if if I could ever do anything for anybody that you just let me know. I, I, I'm all just right. here, no, no. here, but let me know. But you know what? It all starts about with sharing. Yeah. And if we give, we receive. And sometimes I used to think it was supposed to be from the same person. No. 
-hmm. but it's not, you know, sometimes it's somebody else. It's, right. it's, you know, 30 years ago, 30 years ago this month, I was at BET, I got this call from a good friend of mine. Do you want to go to Cameroon with Stevie Wonder? And I'm like, what? Cameroon? Six days later, I got a $5,000 first class ticket. I'm in Africa with Stevie Wonder, you know? And, oh, that, that, and you know, a couple of years later, I'm bringing Michael Jackson on stage. Oh, but four years after that, I was homeless yeah. because I lost a job at BET and lost my mind because I thought I, and 20 years later, I own my own station and I'm my own boss. Mm -hmm. So don't get, you know, frustrated by failure. Think about if people call them losses, W and L's. I talk, I think they're learns. Yeah. The L's are learns. Because yeah. if you do the same dumb shit twice, that's your fault. Yeah, you because, know? yeah, I live by you. Now, if you don't know, you don't know. But when you know better, you're supposed to do better. You're supposed to do better. So yeah. if you don't, that's on you. So, well, thank you. Anyway, I'm so excited. Thank you so much again. You guys review this. We'll have his information in the bottom of the, um, the interview. Go out and get Black out. Go Google Paul Porter if you have to and go to Paul Porter Blackout C Span and watch that. Um, what else can we leave with them, Paul? Uh, you can reach me on IG or any social media at Music Biz U. I actually get back to people and uh if you can't read the book it's honest it reads like a movie it's a short read it's an honest read and i'm here to share and build you know because i wouldn't have got here without other people i'm on somebody else's back and slow down remember it's the long game you know if you get 10 years it ain't enough you know and I know people that have been in this business and out of this business and act like they're still in the business and they're not, yeah. you know, because that's how much it takes control of your heart. And think about the music, man, and do music that touches people, yeah. touches their soul, not their ass, touches their soul. And that's the big difference. But thank you, Marva. Thank Blank, you. Black Link Bank, I'm in. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys. You guys, listen, respect yourself, respect each other. Go help somebody. We are done with the interview and that's it. Thank you.